Welcome to our lecture online. Our next Fourier transform will be the function c e to the a t. It's a function that starts, ex that starts at ne negative infinity and it increases, increases until it reaches times equals zero and then it goes to zero for the remainder. So here we have the function defined. Now we have the function c e to the a t and we have to determine what that c is equal to. We realize that the function will be equal to 10 by the time t approaches 0 from the left and so that means that c e, a, c e to the a t will be equal to 10, it will approach 10. But when the time approaches 0, e to the 0 equals 1, which means that c times 1 equals 10, therefore c must equal 10. That means the function we're going to find the transform for is really 10 e to the a t. So when we plug that into our general equation, when we find the Fourier transform of an input function, that input function now will be 10 e to the at. And so we're going to integrate from minus infinity to zero because after that, the function is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and figure out what that Fourier transform is equal to. So we can take the 10 out, so this becomes equal to 10 times the integral from minus infinity to zero and when we combine these two, we simply, since the base are the same, we add exponents, so that becomes e to the a minus i omega times t dt. So now to integrate that, we're going to need the proper integrand, and that means we're missing the differential this times dt. That means we have to multiply the integrand by a minus i omega and then divide by a minus i omega, so this becomes equal to 10, divided by a minus i omega times the integral from minus infinity to zero of e to the a minus i omega times t, and of course here we have to multiply that times a minus i omega times dt, so we multiply it times this, and we then also divide it by this. So now we can go ahead and integrate that. So when we integrate that, we get the following. This is equal to 10 divided by a minus i omega. And then when we integrate that, we have the quantity e to the a minus i omega times t and evaluated from minus infinity to zero. So I'll make sure we don't confuse that here. All right, when plugging the limits, Let's see what we get. So this is equal to 10 divided by a minus i omega times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get e to the 0. And when we plug in the lower limit, we get minus e to the, well, plug in a minus infinity there. It doesn't matter what's in front of that. Anything times minus infinity will still be minus infinity. Of course, e to the 0, that's equal to 1 and e to the minus infinity is equal to zero, so this becomes equal to 10 divided by a minus i omega times 1 minus zero, and so finally the Fourier transform simply will be 10 divided by a plus i omega. And there you go, that's the Fourier transform of our input function when our input function is equal to 10 e to the at. And that's how it's done.